that song, the unofficial anthem of the other state of hockey. And we are kicking off here in the maiden voyage at our new shiny studios here in uh, high atop Merle High, Merle High Towers. Uh, just kicking the rust off of the, uh, the old gal here. We have a brand new studio, so we are still figuring out the, sh- the, uh, the bugs of this place. We do have the phones working, so we're in good shape. And believe it or not, there's even been a Frank sighting somewhere in the building. So uh, he was running around here a second ago, just busted in through the door. So welcome back to the other state of hockey. My name is Derek Hender. Frankie Mink is our other host when he's here somewhere. Uh, Just want to get started. We have uh, a couple things for today's show. We're going to be joined in studio by... Uh, Joe O'Donnell, the radio voice of the Iowa Wild, uh, as well as we'll have a call-in uh, guest from Dave Allison, a great guy, a great friend of both uh, myself and Frank, uh, former coach of the Iowa Stars. Uh, he's been an NHL player. He's played at all levels as well as coached at all levels. Great guy, lots of stories. Uh, I hope we can get more than – there shouldn't be any trouble to get at least 15 minutes of good material out of Dave. So want to start off, uh, we're going to give a couple of local props – uh, Chad Costello, our boy from uh, Johnston is, with the Allen Americans, going to, is going uh, strong with the finals of the ECHL. The series is currently tied at one game apiece between them and the South Carolina Stingrays. They won last night 5-2 to two to tie up the series. I believe it's a 3-2-2, two and two, I believe. It's the way that series splits, or 2-3-2. Two, two, I'm not sure. But uh, I'm guessing that they're soon going to be headed off to South Carolina. So our best uh, luck and best wishes to Chad. Uh, Also, special call out to a former Des Moines Buccaneer player, Jeff Petrie, just uh, released yesterday that he signed a six-year contract, $55 million with my Montreal Canadiens. I I can honestly say I am ecstatic to hear that. He's a great guy. He's been a great stalwart D just a piece we're looking for. We're building from definitely building from the net out. We've got a great goaltender, got some excellent D's right now. Just got to get someone to put the puck in the net. So I know Jeff can bury the odd one here and there, but uh, we can't be relying on him. But happy for that guy. Great to see a Des Moines Buck doing well. And anyways, five, six more years of him. I'm really looking forward to seeing number 26 in the red, white, and blue. So, uh, reviewing last week, we had uh, we have our final two, which will be starting here in about two fifty minutes or so. Uh, game one will be kicking off. So, last week we had Chicago knocking out Anaheim. Uh, I called it sort of. How's that? I did say it would go at least six or seven. I did not anticipate Chicago pulling it out, just based on the old plain old math and the numbers that and my old gut feeling, but. You know, that's why you play the games, you know. Otherwise, if it was just a matter of numbers and what the game is like, then you'd never, ever get uh, any kind of result. Why would we bother playing if the numbers meant everything? So we've got, uh, you called, would you call it a shocker, Frank? Would you call it a shocker that Anaheim, despite a strong start, didn't finish out? I would say... I, I am shocked. I thought that Anaheim was going to totally uh, wear them down. And I, but I always think that with Chicago. I think Chicago is eventually going to get wore down. And on yep. the size. Little guys. Little 40s. guys. And I'm, I'm always wrong. Like I've, Every time they've been in a big series like that, I've always thought they're going to get wore down. Yep. And, and I really thought Anaheim had the team to wear them down. Yep. From the second line, third line down. It was, but... Uh, they pulled it out again. Yeah. I think Anderson probably dropped back a little bit in his performance starting probably game five. Oh. He was not dominating like he had been. And Kane and Taves, Kane and Taves, Kane and Taves. You know, and, and like I said, I'll be at, now the wedding is set. Remember yep. Bobby even said last week, he goes, I hope if they do make it that they sweep so they can all make the wedding. And so I'm sitting at the tam- same table with Perry. <laughs> so And he really did not show up for... That last game. Well, I hope he shows up for the wedding, though. I hope he does show up for the wedding, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they will be there. Yeah. Uh, I was kind of surprised with the uh, goaltending. I honestly thought that Crawford was a little too inconsistent. I thought that uh, starting out, Anderson was a stronger guy, but, you know, that's why you, call, that's why you play seven games. So, hero. My hero of that series was John Taves. No, no question. 
Absolutely. No question. Captain and serious. Bobby called that. Remember when we were he talking? He, we said, who would you want if you had to have a guy on a line? Yep. Who's your guy? He goes, Taves. Yep. Uh, and that was, we didn't even ask out of that series. We said out of any active player right now, who do you want? Mm-hmm. And the answer he said. Oh. Yep. So Damn. Valeski, our boy, is going to be looking for Big Bank. He's now UFA. So yes. July 1 will be interesting to see how long he hangs on. Uh, East Conference, Tampa and Rangers, you know, there's a lot of feathers, not much chicken made about that. <laughs> where did you, you pull that one out of? <laughs> where did you? The back pocket file, the back pocket file. Um, you know, you had blowouts and shutouts in the same series. You know? What do you say about and that? And they did that all, all playoffs long. Yeah. So all playoff long, that seemed like they were, they would get blown out, then they blow the team out. Yep. You know, it's all, all playoff season, so. Yep, yep. Bishop showed up. He shut out uh, the Rangers in Game Five and Game Seven. He looked strong. Game Six, he looks a different animal altogether. And I mean, and I like to get Joe's take on this too. I, I don't see Tampa Bay's back line being that great though. Mm-hmm. Like they shut out, they shut the Rangers down in that last game. But it just seemed like they showed up. I guess I don't know. Their back line is not what I expect. I mean, for a team that's making it this far. Yep. So. Do you want to, let's get, let's get yeah, Joe in on this. Actually, yeah, it was a great time to introduce him. Uh, Joe O'Donnell, for the radio voice of the Iowa Wild, has joined us here in studio. Where's his camera, Matty? This one? Yeah. yeah. Uh, He's right, right over right. here. Clearly we, not the face. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, we always say we have face. faces no, for radio, no, so. Yeah. We, when we heard we had to be on TV for every one of these shoots, we thought, well, so ratings aren't a big Rethink deal. Things. Yeah, <laughs> ratings aren't a big deal, right? <laughs> so, Joe, what was Thanks your take? Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for Absolutely. coming. It took me a little while to find this place. Well, yeah. as I let off the show saying this is the maiden voyage of this uh, studio. Yeah, I so. like it. Yeah. I've never seen a, uh, a green screen that's green. This green? And it's the, the whole room. The whole room. Yeah. 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 Pretty I, cool. So. I know I wore my Oakley hoodie the first week and I looked like I had <laughs> shots right on through me here. Yeah, and you had a head and just these little <laughs> things. So, so uh, what were your thoughts taken away from the, uh, from the semis? I think you hit on it with the Ducks Blackhawks series. I mean, I thought it was the Ducks series to lose, and they lost it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's that simple. Jonathan Taves is uh, today's Steve Eiserman, is what hmm. I've been kind of saying. Wow, that's a good, I mean, good think analogy. Think about a leader, a guy that rises up in big situations. Captain I mean, Serious. You say all you want about Kane and, and Sharp and Hosa and Saad and Duncan Keith to me and, and Jonathan Taves are the two guys that stir that drink. Yep. And, and it's not even close. And you're just going over that list right there. What depth? You know what yeah. I mean? Any team would take oh, yeah. that depth. Yeah. Well, and I think that's a big, you know, honestly, I think that's why they probably take down the Lightning at the end of the day. I think it's a long series. And I, I like the Blackhawks because how can you not like them? You know, mm-hmm. I, I thought that, I honestly thought this was the year Minnesota beat them because mm-hmm. Chicago has gone to the well so many times. It's hard to keep going back to the conference mm-hmm. finals. It's hard to keep going to the Stanley Cup finals. You just need so much to go right. You have to stay healthy. You have to play 25 games. I mean, it's tough. Mm-hmm. You have to give these guys credit. I mean, they are about as close to a dynasty as it gets in yep. today's NHL. Right, and that's what I say, today's uh, NHL. It's because they you know, they just find ways to get it done. I mean, yeah. it's not one guy, it's another. Nicholas Jalmerson is about as unsung of a hero as it gets for that yeah. team. And hard what, to spell. What, what NHL GM wouldn't <laughs> take him right now as their fourth D man? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing that we've been talking about is the fact that these guys, Chicago's been rolling basically four Ds the whole the whole playoffs. Yeah. And they're all averaging over 30 minutes a night. Yeah. Now, granted, some of that's multiple overtime games, but that's that's yeah. ludicrous, Yeah. you know, from that standpoint. So we'll see how they hold up. I think the rest helps them. It certainly helps Tampa as well because Tampa's already played 20 games. Yeah. yeah. But uh, those 4D get those extra couple of days off for game one tonight. Uh, I think it's going to be big for them. Yeah. And what about two? I don't uh, – you have the two Flyers, the two main Flyer D got traded yeah. away. One, two. Team partners. Yeah, yeah. And now, <laughs> Coburn and Team. Yeah, and now they're going to be going uh, against each other. Yeah, and, and, and honestly, from a uh, from a Philadelphia perspective, Ron Hextall, the Flyers GM, did a great job. He got a first-round draft pick and a defenseman, in mm-hmm. that, uh Gudis kid yeah. from Tampa Bay, and now basically two second-round picks for Kimo Timonen. So he got a player and a first-rounder for the Coburn deal – and because the Blackhawks advanced to the Stanley Cup final, the Flyers receive a second rounder this year and next year. I'm I'm happy with so, Hextall. You know, so far, essentially four bodies for 
two aging defensemen. Yeah. And uh, and Tiemann is not even really playing, not yeah, factoring yeah. in for them. Yeah, you wonder if what his uh, long-term plan is in the, and, in the NHL at this point. Coburn was, uh, was a healthy scratch too, right? Game five, wasn't mm, he? Like a healthy been. scratch or something like that. One of the games. Uh, well, Matt Carl was out of their lineup. Matt Carl, and he was in the flyer too, yeah. But I think he was. DU, DU guy there too. Yeah. Yeah, Anchorage kid. I'm I'm uh, glad I did get in my plug for the Canadians early because I'm surrounded by two Philly guys here right now. So <laughs> keep your head up. Yeah. <laughs> the, as far as the Eastern Conference goes, you know, you mentioned the semifinals. Um, Tampa Bay just they're unflappable. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's the word I'd probably use. Their chemistry is there. Their coach is so calm behind the bench. John Cooper. Remember, all these guys played for John Cooper for the most part. In the American Hockey League. Mm-hmm. You know, the, in Norfolk, where they won like 28 games in a row. They won the Calder Cup in 2012. So he knows, they know what to expect of him and vice versa in pressure situations. Now, granted, Ooh. the Calder Cup Finals is not even anything close to the Stanley Cup Finals. Right. But he's seen these guys play hockey in June, and they've seen him. And, and they they seem to react well to situations. So by no means do I count them out. I just really, if I was a betting man, I wouldn't bet against the Blackhawks because time and time again, like, they were dead in the water in that Duck series. Yeah. yeah. They were pounded into the ground. They're down 3-2. They go home. They win somewhat convincingly in game six from the parts I watched. In game seven, you know, Taves puts the team on his shoulder and 10 minutes in that game's over. Yeah, it was. I would have pulled Frederick Anderson in game seven when it was 2 nothing. Yeah. What do you have to lose at that point? Yeah, yep. you wonder what that effect has on your team chemistry at that point, too. Like what, what kind of a message does it send, the fact that you're panicking? It, is it perceived as yeah, a panic move? But he hadn't played well. You right. know, the end of game five, he seemed to be rattled, gave up those two late goals yep. and went in overtime. Game six, he didn't play well. They lose. Mm-hmm. Uh, he didn't play poorly, but he didn't play well. And game seven, 10, 12 minutes in, you're down 2 nothing, and it's like, you know, at that point, I didn't like any of the goals he gave up in game seven. Absolutely. And not. gave, well, game five was, was 11 the, shots and four goals at yeah, one point yeah, yeah. early in the third. Yeah. Game five, that's the uh, Bolesky. Winner, yeah, right? Yeah, so, and said, that was yeah. right. And so you think if that goal doesn't happen, right? If the Hawks win that game, do they? You know, what are they doing then? Down three two. Yeah, obviously I, it didn't happen that way. But you got to again, you got to give the Hawks credit. They they are battle tested, uh, and they are not going to be an easy. I think it's going to be a great final. It's going to be there's going to be speed. There's going to be pace. We talked about the Blackhawks depth up front. You know, when Antoine Vermette and some of these guys, Brad Richards or just kind of minor contributors to your mm-hmm. team. I think you got to you know, obviously have a, a deep group up front. And Vermette sp- spent most of the playoffs up to this point in the press box. Yeah, at times. So. He wasn't happy about it either. And then he goes out and scores a double overtime. Right. Well, they, be, they, right? They, gave up yeah. a lot of, right. they gave up a lot of uh, pick for him, too. They, was it a first rounder, second rounder? Sorry if I kicked your camera there. Uh, they gave up a pretty high draft pick, I believe, for him as well. So Yeah, he didn't really fit in very well either off the from the onset from that trade. But, uh, you know, I think he's... He's a guy that they wanted a, another scorer. Mm-hmm. They felt they didn't have enough, I guess, and and he can give you that. And he can also, you know, play a checking role too. Kind of like Wisniewski in uh, Anaheim. Never, no, I don't think he hauled the jersey on the whole time in the playoffs. And well, have a guy of that caliber sitting in the press box. I, I mean, well, with the injury to Kane earlier in the year, you wonder how much that played a factor because the team kind of real. Right, that's a good point. You know, at first they were struggling, right, when he first got hurt, and yep. then they pulled it together, and then they were really rolling, and then he gets added back into the lineup. Who are like, their team doctors? <laughs> he was better in like four weeks. I know. I think he's Wolverine or something. I, look, can... <laughs> I, I know Jason Zucker pretty well, right? Played yeah. in Iowa, but I knew him from Houston. Kid's going to work his tail off. Yep. He had the pretty much the exact same injury and took exactly what, you know, the doctor said eight to 10 weeks or whatever the prognosis was. And he was basically back in that timetable. So he did what medically you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Came back, played well, had an impact in the regular season, the playoffs, finished with 20 goals. Kane was back like two fewer weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And his point of game guy. Yeah. Right. He, he looked a little timid at first, but it took no time from once he got his feet wet and he got back and took those first couple of hits. I mean, he was, like you said, lights out. He made he was a difference maker. Difference maker for sure. Well, before we get on going, we want to uh, pay some bills. But before we go, Maddie, don't get crazy now. Don't get crazy. Don't we panic. Are now, we are on, is this the penthouse, the 6-4? Is this the highest this goes, this building? I didn't see anything higher. There you go. We are the, in the penthouse. We went from... You guys are top shelf. That's it. I mean, <laughs> bar down right now. Bar down. Hey, so uh, w- again, welcome to the other state of hockey. Uh, Joe O'Donnell, voice of the Iowa, Star- uh, Iowa Stars. Sorry, the uh, Iowa Wild. Woof. You know, jeez. Old habits die hard. They, they do die hard. <laughs> Iowa Wild is special guest in all day with us. Stay the whole time, whole show. Uh, sticking around for, you know, as long as you guys will have well, me. Lock the door, Maddie. And then, uh, Ray, when we come back, we will ha- be joined by the 
uh, Des Moines Buccaneers coach Davey Allison. So we'll be right back. Real Estate Concept Studios. This is Webcast One Live. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you. Sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can give these grandkids back, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We can help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hey. Let me let you in on a little secret. You ready? Always try to do business with people, not places. Especially if you seek honest Christian business people. And when it comes to my car, I really need to trust who's working on it. Now, my family is so blessed. A few years ago, we found a family-owned automobile repair shop that operates as a Christian business also. Open, honest, Reliable, trustworthy. It's Amco on Hickman Road in front of Kmart. And it's a family-owned Christian operating business. This family treats your car as if it was their car. Everything from oil changes to transmission repair and everything in between. So the next time you feel the need to be at peace with your choice of who you can trust with your car, give Amco on Hickman a chance to serve you. And tell them Max sent you. All right. Oh, there I am. For anyone that doesn't listen and they get to actually watch it, look at this thing. I mean, I'm landing an airplane, Joe. I'm mm-hmm. landing an airplane. Bring it in. I'd right be there. scared if you were landing an airplane. <laughs> I'm I'm I've seen you park. <laughs> <laughs> I got that Philly. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, yeah, welcome back to the other state of hockey. Uh, this period two. Um, we're going to have our guest come on. Uh, so before we come on, uh, he's not on the uh, – he's on mute right now. So uh, Davey Allison was uh, – Dave Allison, somebody, Davey, I got to work with for a year. He's kind of like one of my bosses and one of the best bosses. I mean, just, uh, you did, he asked you to do something and I got it done for, you know, he just, he's one of those guys. I'm sure he's just like with his players. If you did what he asked, you got more playing time. And, uh, he just allowed me to, uh, to grow and know how to work in a locker room and, and be part of a team. And so, uh, he actually one time asked me to come play net in practice. And this was back when we had James Neal, Chris Connor, and uh, it's like my second time I got to go play. And uh, I don't know if Dave knows this whole story. So they call me. I'm in a meeting, and he said, "Come down. We need to buy Stefan." I just gotten a call up. So uh, a- Andy Moog was in town. He's our goalie coach. So I go down. I'm putting on all my gear. I help run out on the, the rink. Soon as I put my foot, second I put my ice on that, my skate on the ice, I realized I forgot my cup. <laughs> in practice with these guys so anyway I, I i just don't say anything and i just go out and practice already started taking shots and uh out there and i tell chris connors at the end practice was over a couple guys just staying out shooting around james neal chris connors and uh we had this russian kid i can't think of his name really push off push off so they're sitting out there doing like a tip drill and i turned to chris connors and i just made this awesome save let me just say 
phenomenal save on James. Found Neal. your glove, huh? Uh, okay. No, it was my foot. It was okay. a beautiful kick save. Beautiful. I happened to already be down, but it was good. <laughs> so um, I tell Connors, I said, uh, Mighty Mouse, I said, Joe, man, I, I don't have my cup on. And he was just like, are you not? I mean, those guys were blasting at me all day. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I went out and I never told Coach that because he probably never asked me to goalie in practice. And I love doing that. So anyway, let's bring, uh, let's bring Davey Allison on here. Davey, can you hear us? Frankie? Yeah, there you go. Could you hear us? Yeah, not too bad. It's a little, uh, it's a little squash, but I'm driving back from uh, Canada. And uh, glad to be on it. I do remember that for crying out loud. I think you got uh, James Deal back on a scoring uh, streak on that. I think I did too. I think he he was pretty embarrassed that I had shut him down the whole practice, and he just he lifted his game. He definitely lifted his game from that one. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then I told him not to go five all on you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. I just remember. I just thinking if one of those guys would have hit me, I, I just think Trevor Burns was the one guy that actually came close. And if you, you remember Trevor, he's a great guy. And uh, he, he was one guy that came pretty close to almost uh, nicking me there. And uh, thank God. I mean, it's not a big target down there. So we're OK. You know what I mean? So it was all right with that. So. Um, so they, how's, how's it going? How are you feeling being back coaching in Des Moines? Well, you know what? I mean, last year was a huge transition year for myself because I don't think you can understand the USHL unless you go through it. It was the most challenging league I've ever been a part of, and uh, I think we're way ahead of where we were. But I don't think I know we're way ahead of where we were last year. Uh, Rick Beckfeld and his scouting staff has done a great job. I think we're going to have some real competition. Uh, for positions, and I just think that the quality of kids that we've got coming back uh, are going to lay the groundwork uh, for moving forward and, and being able to sustain uh, what those kids started at the beginning of the year. I just think that, you know, you've got a Patrick Grasso mm-hmm. really wants to win. He, he's invested while he lives in the community, and, and uh, they're their, your best recruiters, and you know, I just think that we've got, we've made strides, and, and now we've just got to keep moving forward, Frank. Yeah, and talking about Patrick Grasso, too, is, you know, and what a great story. I mean, he was he was our stick he was our stick boy. I mean, not to make it sound such like it's not a great job, but he was our stick boy for the stars uh, when you were our coach. So he's like this young kid hung, hanging around, and now he's wearing the A for a team that you're coaching. I just think that's such a tremendous story. Well, and his dad was the stick boy for the New York Rangers when my brother was playing there. That's right. I mean, and uh, my brother's coming down to help us out at this camp with a couple other buddies. So it is amazing. And it's amazing when you're around it, how you start to understand how to act and how to take advantage of it. And Brass is a perfect example. I mean, you know, you look at the size of them, but the New York Islanders, when they came down, he was one of the guys that they wanted to talk to because, you know, you look at the skill, you look, all you really need is the size, but the way he's going, and, and, and even his his uh, his foresight to say, okay, uh, I need another year at junior, right. holds well for his future as a college free agent moving forward. You know, he's just, and, and you know, that's, it's a, ain't the uh, Grasso show. I mean, come on now, we got to talk about me more. But, you know, he, every Monday, he was coming out this, just this last couple months, coming out and helping me with the kids, you know, with no, uh, there, every week, on time, you know, just always out there with the kids. I mean, just a, a great kid. And my son truly looks up to him, and I couldn't ask for a better player for my son to look up to. Absolutely. Absolutely great. Hey, Coach, uh, real quick, uh, I, we, as we were talking earlier, you've been you've coached at pretty much every level of professional hockey in the, available in North America at this point, and you were making a comment that uh, the uh, USHL is probably the most challenging league you've coached in. What was your best season as far as uh, as a coach, as far as feeling that you really accomplished something, the, the season that really stands out in your memory? You know, that's a good question. Uh, I think that the season you're in stands out, but I hark it back to, you know, I went into Kingston. I, I've been fortunate to go into, I think it's five different places. We went from last to first in one year, 
And you talk about changing a culture, yeah. but how they embraced it, and it was really, really exciting. Like, we went into Roanoke my first year. We went from last to first. And we had some great kids, Billy Woodfield, uh, Marco Fooster, Greg Deesh. And you still remember those kids. And I brought those kids to, uh, with me to Albany the next year. And then I went into Kingston and the OHL and, and we drafted Lindros. And he never showed up at the draft because I think he wanted to go to college. Bro. But we went from second last to, to, to second best at you know, came within uh, two games of going to the Memorial Cup and David Ling and Brad and, 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 and Craig Reve and uh, Boss. If you remember those kids, and then we went into PEI with Randy Sexton and Ray Shearer with the same thing. And, you know, now all of a sudden, last bit the place for me there was captain. We, we, we really made a push to trade for his son. Hmm. So it's interesting how it's all cyclical. And, uh, you know, just there's always something good about a season, but it sure makes it even more enjoyable when you do have success and, and guys have individual success, uh, you know, that, that, that makes it worthwhile. Hey, Coach Joe O'Donnell here. How are you? Good, Joe. Been a while. Um, you, you, you talk about worst to first. Uh, the Iowa Wild have had a couple of last place finishes now in two years here in Des Moines. Uh, how do you change that culture? I know John Torchetti is going to try and, you know, with the help of Minnesota, bring in the right veteran guys uh, to build around the young guys that, that are here, the core guys, Minnesota prospects that will be back. So your, your hands are somewhat tied in the American Hockey League. But what's, what's that shift in culture like when you go from you know, not having success to getting rid of that here-we-go-again feeling and finding success early in the year? Well, I think you have to have talent that starts in the net. And I think that what you want to do when you're in the American Hockey League is you want to really lean on your older guys early on, but you want your young guys to pass the by. And, you know, so much of it is scouting. I think that they do have some good young talent there. You look at the, the, the Duba kid that, that played well and was really, really effective in the playoffs, the Stanley Cup playoffs. But I think that you've got to get those those good veterans to carry you early. And then, once your young kids, you want your young kids to pass those guys. And almost at that time, your veterans are happy because instead of them having to carry the load, now you share the load and it gives them longevity and it starts to let you win. And, you know, the bottom line is, is the teams that are still playing develop their players. And, and that's what you have to constantly have. It's not about winning. That's the goal. But you've got to develop from within. And, you know, that comes from good scouting, good player development. But, you know, I think that Minnesota has done well. And that's a reflection of, of, of the job Torch has done down here, um, which is the most important thing. You know, it's funny is uh, we had the Iowa Wild coach on last week. Or two weeks ago, two weeks. and he said the same thing. First thing he said was, "Start with goaltending." Anyway, you start with goaltending. It has to start there with uh, building the new team or building the new town. It was the first thing he talked about, and it's first thing that you said too. So, yeah, and the vet and the veterans too. I mean, I read an article earlier this year, coach, about the job that Grand Rapids has done. Nathan Page and Jeff Hogan and guys that are unsung heroes, unselfish. They don't care about getting called up to the NHL. They want to win, and you set that example with those guys. So when the coach, when Coach Blasio leaves the locker room, he's got nothing to worry about. Well, and in, in, in saying that, Luke Glendenny, yeah, Glendenny, was a college free agent, and he is in the National Hockey League. And then they had a couple D, and it goes with what we were talking about earlier. They those D, they brought them up early in the year, and they were sufficient. But now all of a sudden, Spruill and Marsh, Mar- Marshenko or whatever, they're the guys that it's their time. But, but they need to get those legs underneath them. And that defenseman they've got there, the captain, is outstanding. I, his name slips me, but, uh, you know, he, he, he's, a, he's a perfect example of a guy that is, is, is valuable to an organization, not only to the Grand Rapids Griffin, but to the Detroit Red Wings. You know, going over this playoff season, uh, Matt Bolesky has really been m- reminding me of the year that Toby Peterson had when he went back up to Dallas in that playoff run. 
Remember he had that great year when he got brought up and he was a big time Ung Sung hero in a lot of stuff. And so as I was watching Matt Bolesky this year, it really reminded me of uh, the Toby Peterson's uh, playoff run with the Stars. Oh, absolutely. And then with Toby, the, the first year, Toby went up with, uh, with the Edmonton Oilers right to the finals That's and right. lost to Carolina. That's right. That is right. Like, he was invaluable to our organization that first year, Frankie. You know that as well as I do because, you know, you look at the development of uh, Toby Peterson, and then the next year it was James Neal. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, Toby Peterson uh, and Junior Lassard played with those guys and like, Louis Erickson had, like, I think one goal at Christmas and ended up with over 20. Right. James scored his second goal uh, before the Christmas break when we played Houston and ended up with close to 28 uh, yeah. or something like that. And, and you just need those guys that, that have true empathy um, but still want to get better themselves. Right. I mean, the day you quit wanting to get better is the day you got to get out of the game because they're going to pass you by in a heartbeat. That's right, mm-hmm. and I t- and I definitely seen that with uh, with Toby. And uh, what about you know I, where is Junior Lasard? And you know Joe, Dave, you know where Junior Lasard is. He's teaching. Is he? He's moved back to Quebec, and he got married to his uh, uh, his, his fiance, his girlfriend, and he's teaching and he's uh, coaching a little hockey. And, uh, he's doing very well for himself. Good. Yeah, I I really enjoyed uh, spending a lot of time with uh, with him. He's a great guy. Oh, that was a good group, Frankie, with, uh, with uh, B.J. Crombie, and uh, there was all kinds of guys. They were outstanding. And that off that off ice uh, staff, boy, they were phenomenal. Them guys. <laughs> we're back oh, to invite that, you, aren't we? <laughs> back to me. <laughs> Paul and Gerard was top shelf, and uh, you know Doc, and, and, and uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. It was good. We had, and uh, yeah, Krause. I mean, it was just a great. Great group of people around. Good to see Paulie in the uh, AHL finals. Yeah, Paulie's doing well. I, I talked to him today. He's very excited about that. You know, last year uh, they, they got off to a bad start, but they were one of the top teams going down the stretch. And, and this year they've gone wire to wire. And, uh, you know, they beat the Chicago Wolves. That's a hell of a. Yeah. Uh, they beat them the first series in five games. And uh, that was a tough, that was a tough, you know, series for them. You know, the good thing about uh, Paulie um, Gerard was uh, so earlier in the year we had a big game coming up, and uh, it, with my our youth team, and we had back to back games. And I said, "Who can I call to help me figure something out?" And I talked to you about this, mm-hmm. Eric. I said, "Who can I call that can help me figure out something? I can get the kids on a good snack diet before these two big games they had." And I called Paulie, and he talked to me probably for about an hour <laughs> about health and and what the kids should be eating and not to have them give them too much sugar and man it was just i mean like to take my call and and to talk to me for an hour yeah about what i should be giving the kids it was just uh, amazing before we let you go too well we have a couple more questions but one time i i think i told you i ran into a, a glenn cochran not too long ago and uh yeah. that name rings a bell with you so it was so funny and i don't know if i told you the story so he comes down he watches uh anthony he watched my son and derek's boys play at a game and now he's scouting for anaheim but he happened to be in town and he comes to watch our kids play over at the metro i mean just the nicest guy and so we start talking about you and he says everyone's talking about how tough he is he goes man that davy allison boy he sent me to the hospital and i was like really like he he beat you that bad and 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 you know and dropping the gloves he says yeah, well, no, I broke my hand punching him. <laughs> that, hey, I tell you this. I went to buy him 14 to 16 times, and I said to well, uh, the, the other scout I was still with, uh, you know, I thought Cocker and I was all 14 and 2, and he thought I said 2 and 14, and he told me that story, and it's a great Story. Every time I watch you, I go to the hospital to get stitches in my ass. <laughs> well, you're a great guy. So we're going to uh, end it here with a couple uh, questions. We asked a lot of the people that know a lot about hockey, so we're going to hit you with a couple questions, and then we'll let you get uh, back to driving there. So go ahead, Derek. All right. So uh, you've got Game 7 right now. You're down by a goal. Anybody that's currently rostered in the NHL, who is your go-to guy? Who are you throwing over the boards, Coach? Well, you know, Taves and, Taves and uh, 
change, you've got to look at those two guys. But I think that Kane can make something out of nothing more than any other player in the National Hockey. Uh, he's just a game breaker. Yeah. And and that's the same. Uh, we asked Bobby Ryan that same question last week. We said, you know, minute and a half left on the road. You're down by one. You know, who do you want over the boards with you? Who who's going to put that puck home? And he said, same thing, Taves. I think said, Torchy was along the same lines as well, too. That's right. So. So. Great minds are thinking alike here. Yeah, well, he's biased. True. Yeah. Patrick this is, Kane got him a Stanley right. Cup that's right. ring. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Well, you know. <laughs> and he brought that up about how it happened in Philly, and he rubbed it in my face a little I'm sure bit. sure he so. did. <laughs> so last question, Coach. So uh, if you're nominated uh, to be Gary Bettman's replacement, and you've got my vote already, but uh, if there's one rule you can change or one thing you can change about the National Hockey League or the way hockey's played right now, what would that be? You know, I think I, I, uh, I, I wouldn't have as big a roster. Wow. I would go with uh, 18 because I think people pay to see stars. Wow. I might add another, I might add another, uh, you know, TV time out where you can rest players. But people want to see the stars. I mean, you look at the Chicago team, they're playing 30 minutes a night. Yeah. And, you know, that's, you don't need, now, you'd have to, you know, fix the travel and make sure that, you know, you're back to back for a certain way, but you, you know, again, it's an interesting question. I never really thought of it, but I never, you know, with Pittsburgh, uh, when I worked for them, I didn't even think they needed a fourth center because you could just roll, you could double shift one of those guys. Right. And that's what the American Hockey League was before. Yeah. You know, you had uh, 11 forwards and 16. And I thought it was great because you got your best players on the ice more. Uh, look at the finals now. You've got uh, Tampa Bay playing 7-D regularly because they're forwards. Somebody that's hot's getting that extra shift. And those guys, players, as you know, Davey, especially in the American League, you dress a lot of times 7-D. And, and the forwards that are getting that extra ice time, they love it. I think it is. I mean, Stars want to play. Yeah. They want to play? Fans want to see Stars. They don't come to see, you know, they, they come to see the top guy. All right, so last question here before we let you go because we got to get a break and pay our bills here with the commercials. But uh, if you had, uh, what do you think of the three on three? If they're going in the overtime, four on four, then three on three, and, and then I'll let you go. What do, you, do, you, do you like that rule or do you think uh, we go into the shootout? What do you think? Uh, you know what? I, I think the four on four is great, and the three on three sort of turns it into a bit of a, a track beat. But again, it's still entertainment, and that's the business we're in. And if it's three on three in the side, hey, I'm all for it. If they want to stay at four and four, I'm all for that. But three on three is a track beat, and you better have some skill. Yeah. Better have some, the sheet. better have some scoring D. You know, that, that them D are going to roll out there, are going to be some uh, your, your scorers, too, because it's going to be a lot of opportunities for them be, to uh, have that shot. So, all right, well, we are going to pay some bills here. Davey, thank you so much. And, um, we will uh, be right back with the other state of hockey. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wondershide. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the Service Manager. Marketing Director and Client Relations Manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us. 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fixing the problem today, if they have another problem five days down the road, it's still a fixed rate or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run 
afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones the same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile? That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home, safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about, is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're gonna make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. All right. Well, man, that was great having Davey on. Great. Sim. He's a guy that we could probably just sit and let him talk. So Yes, we could bring him. We need to bring him in and sit him down for the full hour. I guarantee you we'd never get anything accomplished that we're going to want to talk about, but it'd be a great hour of entertainment. And now, not to put no pressure on, but I'm hoping that Joe gives us that in this segment because I'm – knowing that I love hearing Joe talk hockey. So I'm hoping he, uh, I really, it's, you just brought up something you know, off air about that uh, more TV timeouts and showing more highlights. Yeah. And, and explain that again about the adding the three minutes. So, so. so my, my plan for the NHL, if I was Gary Bettman, we yes. talk about marketing the league, right? And how do you, how does the game grow to me when you're watching on television? And again, I full this full disclosure here. I get paid to watch ice hockey. And even I, watching on television from time to time, wonder what that puck hit. Was it the post? Was it the, you know, the knob of the goalie stick? Did it hit the defenseman skates? So I've kind of contended you could sell this, too, from a sponsorship standpoint. Mm -hmm. If you increased each NHL game, I don't know, three to four minutes in length, not playing time, but downtime, the fans aren't going to notice. Nobody's going to go, man, that game minutes. took forever. No, right. I'm saying the same old 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. But when you come back from your three TV timeouts stay for 30 seconds to a minute without dropping the puck and show the fans what, you know, what just happened. Right. Show them, go back to that power play sequence. Show me that two-on-one again. Break it down. More analysis, more angles, uh, and it'll grow the game. It'll help fans understand the game more. And I think for the casual fan, they'll go, man, what an athletic play that was. Yeah. Right. You know, how, how what speed, what what skill, whatever the, whatever the phrase is, you know, describing that play. Because as you and I, as we know, they're unbelievable world class athletes. Right. Yep. And just to put on skates is hard enough thing to do. Right. As I can attest to. So for me, show <laughs> I, I've more, seen you play. right? You know, show more of the skill. Show more replays. We love watching the NFL because you see every play a hundred different times. And how many times and all of us have heard this in this room, I didn't like hockey until I went to a game. Yeah. I, when I watched it on TV, I didn't get it. Yeah. yeah. And so and I wanted to has been great. I get it. But, but I think that it, solves that. Show more. Show me more replays. You can sell it to sponsors. Mm -hmm. Nobody in the arena is going to notice because they're still shooting out T-shirts or playing rock music or showing fans having a good time. It's not. It's not a you know a twenty minute longer game. I'm talking a minute or two per period. I like it. Nobody would notice. Mm -hmm. and you might be able to show more, help grow the game, um, and learn the game for the, from well, the casual fan standpoint. And coming back to what Coach was saying, you know that additional extra time also for a media timeout gives you a chance to rest your horses too. Yeah. So you can look at double shift in your big right. guys, you know, as far as getting your star power right. on the ice. Right. So you don't have a Yahoo like me being, <laughs> it's being shifted. You're not coming back. Hey, we're back. And here's the fourth line. Yeah. Here's the fourth line. No. <laughs> but, uh, so just wanted to get uh, a few things from Joe here. So we already have established that you're from uh, Pennsylvania, Harvardton, I believe. Harvardton. Yeah, Harvardton. Yeah, sorry. 20 minutes from Philly. Okay. So like I said earlier, I'm surrounded by Philly guys and I've got fight strap on this shirt, on this t-shirt. <laughs> I'd like to thank uh, Nate Bellable for outfitting me with that. 
I take mine's off. <laughs> I know. First piece of work Nate's done in yeah. probably six months. <laughs> Whew. I'm glad he's – well, he actually, Nate is probably listening, so our phone's going to blow up here shortly. So, uh, Joe, tell us what got you into hockey broadcasting. I wasn't going to play. I wasn't good enough to play. Uh, big sports center kid growing up. You know, the the big show, Dan Patrick and Keith Olbermann watched a ton of sports center. I can remember watching sports center – before walking up the street to the catch the bus in middle school and um, in high school before I was driving. So huge sports center guy, huge hockey fan. I was a big Patrick Waugh fan growing up. Uh, huge Canadians fan, which wow. my parents still haven't really forgiven me for, I don't think. Yeah, so, I, I, I kind of got to grudge, know why I he gotta grudge myself bus. right now. Yeah. I'm kind of like, so now, yeah, really? Yeah, it's yeah. going to be a one-on-two fight. <laughs> now we know why he walked to the bus too, right? <laughs> uh, so, you know, for me, I, I was just a huge hockey guy and – I didn't play till later. I didn't grow until even after that. Um, not that I'm tall. Still now. waiting. Yeah, still waiting. <laughs> so I think when I got to college, you know, I kind of had an idea. I wanted to get in the radio. I went for communications to the University of Delaware. And uh, the first, like, day on campus, I just went, you know, to the orientation, freshman orientation, found the radio station. I was like, hey, I want to call hockey games. And they're like, all right, show up Friday night. So I rode my bike to the rink, met the guys. They're like, you got to take a couple of tests, took the tests, and just kind of waited my turn till other guys graduated, or you know, I did a little color analyst uh, mm-hmm. analysis, and then um, got an opportunity to call college hockey games, like club hockey, the ACHA, yeah. Iowa State, and mm-hmm. Penn State, Delaware, um, Michigan Dearborn was one of the teams that we'd see frequently, West Virginia. It was okay hockey, you know, um, just got my feet wet, and then, you know, from there, it was just all right, here's what I'm going to do. I, I didn't really call their sports in college. It wasn't a lot of baseball or basketball for me. It was pretty much, I'm going to try and get to the NHL calling hockey games. Hmm, good for you. So what are your thoughts on Des Moines? I know you've been in Reading and uh, yep. you've been in uh, Houston. So yeah. here I we are in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I interned in Reading, Pennsylvania for a couple seasons. I was Which isn't that far from Philly. Yeah. So. I drive up after my, I was, I was actually a bill collector on the phone. I was a telephone tough guy. <laughs> Just yelling at people to pay their bills. And then I, you know, I drive up for their home games and help out their broadcasters, set up the press box. And, um, and then I got a job in Boise, Idaho. Uh, their radio With guy quit. Steelhead? Yeah. Their radio guy quit in like March of 05. Uh, so I went there and finished the year and then did the next three seasons. So we were the double A affiliate for the Iowa Stars. So right, 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 right. You know, we won the uh, fortune enough to be part of a. a was that John Over? Uh, it was JO's last year, and then Derek Laxdahl took over. Okay. And we won the. Uh, he's now coaching the Texas Stars. And uh, mm-hmm. fortunate enough to be there in 07 when we won the Kelly Cup with Crombean and Lammers and Wattier. You know, all these guys. You know, Steve Silverthorne yep, was the yep, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Jay Beagle is on that team yep. now playing with Ovechkin. You know, <laughs> that still blows my mind. The, the, <laughs> Jay Beagle is a fresh face from college. Like, he finished it at uh, with the Seawolves in Anchorage. Joined our team. Couldn't basically get in our lineup, you know, as a, as a rookie fresh out of college. And now, seven years later, he's playing with Ovechkin in the Winter Classic. And I'm going, wow. You know, I never would have. <laughs> How did this happen? That. So, uh, yeah, Boise, Idaho, then got the job in Houston. Uh, actually, Jason Shaver really helped me get that gig down there. Which was yeah, also. Yeah. yeah. So he left for Houston for Chicago. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went to Houston, was there five years, and then moved with the team here. So nice. long way around it. But, yeah, we love Des Moines, my, my family and I, and uh, it's a great town and organization's awesome. Yeah. Cool. So I know we've uh, Frank and I have lamented on previous shows about uh, local media and lack cool. thereof support. And we've even gone as far as to call it Keith Murphy by name, mostly because we know he doesn't listen to the show. Uh, of course, I challenge him to listen, and I challenge him to call us in, and I'd love to sit down with him. But uh, local media they does lead off with hockey like two weeks later after we were saying something, right? Yes, yeah. probably because it was something detrimental to the sport, I'm sure. Okay. But okay. Uh, kind of tell me what your take. I mean, this you know, we keep hearing this is not a great, this is not a hockey town, this isn't a hockey That's state. Not true. I, good I fan keep... support, good corporate support. Exactly. Long season ticket base, great building. I mean, new HD video board going to Wells Fargo yep. Arena in, in August. It's now going to, you know, that that to me is the one step that building needs to take to be, like, maybe the best building in the American Hockey League. Right. Uh, People love room, coming here. Great. Yeah. It's, there's nothing that the players and the organization don't have resource wise. Mm-hmm. Uh, from a media coverage standpoint, would you always like more? Sure. Unless you're in Hershey, Pennsylvania in the American Hockey League or maybe Utica right now mm-hmm. with a 3,000 seat building where you're sold out every game. Yeah. You know, you always want more coverage. Um, we have to win more. Bottom yes. line, the Iowa yeah. Wild win, you force the media. Mm-hmm. Force the yeah. media's hand. Now, will we love coverage win or lose? Sure. 
Um, but I really believe, and I've heard about this town from day one, that they will support a winner. So once that bandwagon gets rolling and the Wild yeah. start to have more success, I would imagine that the media cover the Iowa Wild more. Mm -hmm. um, Do they even have a staff writer? And and I don't want you to, because I know that it's hard for you to work this line where sure. you work yeah. you know, with these I'm people. I'm on a tightrope right now. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm not Just trying don't to. don't hang yourself. No, but I, I think... To answer your question, no, they don't. There's nobody really dedicated to the Iowa Wild, which is partly why we, you know, kind of procured the services of Tom Watowski, mm -hmm. who's written for years. Right. You know, somebody that can come to every game, that will write pieces for our website, that will provide content for us. Maybe uh, support a radio show. And knows how to do it. You know? <laughs> um, a local radio show. Yeah. So, <laughs> at KXNO has been great. You know, we've er we've had games, been fortunate enough to have our games on the top sports station in town for two years, and mm -hmm. that's something we're proud of. Uh, the Morning Rush supported us wholeheartedly. Uh, the Fanatics now in the afternoon. Uh, when Ken Miller was there, he would do constant interviews. Murph and Andy, candidly, have been a uh, tough nut to crack from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean we can't keep working on them. We got to get them to a game. You were talking about getting yep. people to a game. Yep. We get them to more games. We win more hockey games. Right. That's one way that's natural, kind of a grassroots way to, to get more coverage. Yeah. I think it's just impressive. And supporting to a radio see, show. Yeah. I'm just, I, I think it was just impressive to see the, the fact that, yes, we did struggle in the standings. We're still top 10 in the league in attendance. Yeah. You know, so I'd like for Mr. Murphy to walk around the stadium and tell all those 6,000 people that mm -hmm. we yeah. averaged it that is out, not a hockey You know, town. whoever it is, you know, not a media personality, but anybody that just comes to town and sees a Saturday night Iowa Wild game with the yeah. game presentation. And, Affordable ticket prices and it's fun. Um, good hockey, second best hockey in the world. And Absolutely. I think many would argue no. that. You know what? What don't you like about that? Yeah. If you come out and see it, right? Just need people to give us the opportunity. Now, have you been? Do you follow the Bucks at all? I mean, do you kind of? I went to a all? game uh, last year. Uh, I should have gone this year just because I, I I respect. I mean, I know you're busy. I mean, Allison. oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I wanted to check out a game, see the building. Um, so I did that. You know, two seasons ago, I didn't get to a game this year. But I do follow what they're doing. I follow their Twitter account. I mean, mm -hmm. I think from day one, the Wild have tried to support all forms of hockey here. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, support hockey you support our roller? I mean, like you got a, a big banner in our we're, roller ring? like a you know a family, mm -hmm. honestly. It's a yeah. sport that needs all the support it can get. Absolutely. From the youth level right on up. 100%. 100%. So what was your highlight of your broadcasting career, Joe? Uh, probably Th doing this show. Yes. Thank you. But this is at least a top second, 20 yes. or so. <laughs> second to this 20 Far minutes. second to this. Go ahead. Yes. A distant second to this last 20 minutes with you two clowns um, would probably be, you know, the Kelly Cup in 07. That was, you never know when. I was very fortunate making being on teams that made the playoffs almost every year I've been in broadcasting until, you know, recently missing the last two years. Um, so that's been tough. I kind of I want to call playoff hockey games again. Yeah. Uh, going to the Calder Cup Finals in 2011 in Houston, where we lost to Binghamton, but just being on that stage where there were nights we were on Sirius XM satellite radio it was my call. You know, there's no other hockey game on the planet. Yeah. Um, you know, not saying that the ratings were going through the roof, but it's great it's exposure for absolutely. the organization. Yep. So personally, um, that put you know, the Houston Arrows on the map for a lot of Minnesota Wild fans. Mm -hmm. Mike Yo ended up getting the job then after that year. Mm -hmm. A lot of those players, Spurgeon, Prosser, you know, guys. Was you play-by-play? -play for, for, I mean, you were always play-by-play -play once yeah. you got with you. Okay. Yeah. So this will be my eighth year in the American League coming up, play-by-play. -play. Do you remember? Yeah, so, so those big games, those are the ones you remember. You, you, you'll you pick up stories along the way, crazy stuff that happens. There's certain things, games, moments, players I'll never forget. But mm -hmm. when you get on that big stage and it's June and you're calling hockey games, there's nothing better in the world for me. Do you remember what your key, uh, how was it, when you won the Kelly Cup, when you won that? Do you, like, do you remember what you said? Oh, yeah. Because you know, yeah. like, I was thinking about the night before a little bit. But yeah, said, absolutely, yeah. And you can begin the party, Boise. You know, five seconds to go. Yeah. The Steel Edge are I mean, I would love that moment. Cup champions yeah, or To whatever. think about that. You don't want to butcher it. Right, no, absolutely. Yeah, because people overthink it, right? Minutes, yeah. Um, I think we were up like 4-1 at the time in game five in Dayton, Ohio, with about six fans in the building. And <laughs> I was calling the game from behind the net, which is an odd place to call the game. Trying right. to call it left the to numbers. right. You're right. The numbers. Uh, you can't see. Not being left to right. Have it being north to south. Um, you know crappy connection on the phone line or whatever it was You're right. yeah yeah AOL ghetto, but uh <laughs> you know it was a great great time and 
celebration was awesome, and the and the players it was well deserved. We were outstanding. We were not an ECHL team. I mean, mm. Francis Watier is pretty much on your third line. Tuomas Mikanen, do you guys remember? Yeah, yeah I remember. Mm-hmm. Big Finnish kid. Yeah, and some horses on that team. Yeah. Wow. So I know you got to get out of here pretty quickly, and I know yeah, we're coming do a, another scre- radio show. Yeah, we're screeching to the hall of the uh, probably another one of his career highlights. Uh, <laughs> screeching to the Not hall like of our one. show here. So uh, a question we've asked everybody else. I know you've alerted to uh, something you wanted to do. So a rule change. Would you think of any rule change that you'd like to see? Uh, you know, you you guys actually brought it up the because um, a, a buddy of mine asked me this a couple weeks back. Um, three on three hockey mm-hmm. in a heartbeat. Hey, it, won it. it was so awesome in the American League this year. I don't know, a third, a third of the games went to shootouts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In previous years, I know the fans love the shootouts, but the GMs and the you'll love three on three hockey. I would love three on three. I mean, it's I, I do too. I think the skills comp- it's it's more of a skills competition thing when you have the shootout, but actually having you know three moving parts, you mm-hmm. have some action, yeah. some sequence, some strategy going into it. You get some freewheeling hockey happening, creativity. It beats the hell of one guy coming in on a goalie. I'd be stunned if the NHL isn't going three on three at some point in overtime. Maybe not this October, but the following season. I mean, every turnover is going to be it's going to turn into a three on one or three on two mm-hmm. in a turnover down. You know, yeah. so it's going to be exciting. Cause yeah, and, and it's more- hard to defend. Yeah, it's hard to defend. You can defend four on four. Coach has been doing it for years. So right. how do you def- you know defend? But they say three that three. the three on two is like. It, it, three on two is like the, the old two on one. It's such, such an opportunity now, and it mm-hmm. used yeah. to be not be. Well, you got the late man coming, yep. shot off the pads, the POP. Yeah, yeah. Guy driving the net. I mean, it, look, every team practices three on twos pretty much every day. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I think about guys like Domba and PK Subban. Throw those guys into a three on three situation, you get some creative stuff yeah. happening quick. The old oh, yeah. highlight material. I didn't Paul Coffey's like, damn, that's, that would have been <laughs> right? another 500 points. <laughs> <in my game. laughs> He'd still be playing. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to uh, – wow, we're almost done here. We, we've run out we're of time. We're screeching to a halt here. Yeah, we are. We're going to let you get out of here, Joe. Yeah, real quick. Thanks, guys. It's a lot of fun. Love talking hockey. Good luck with this. Um, Des Moines, the, the planet, needs more hockey talk. So You know it. Really good stuff. We'd I love know to Frank have you back. I know Frank has been talking about getting this done forever. So, um, and we want to help you, hopefully have you, you know, yeah. more and more always contribute. We love, love it. Love having well, you on. Especially during the season. We want to out my – my face for radio and <laughs> and then here what what a guy he, on the phone maybe he's a Philly guy and then he turns around and says he's a Montreal fan like really like I have paid my you? dues Frankie yeah. wow. I ask for forgiveness of all my close friends and my father you have That's repent- all you can do <laughs> when I made the switch I forgive you <laughs> well with hit the, me now <laughs> with the forgiveness being given out. Let's close out tonight's show and get ready for game one. Game one. Game one. So, all right there, other State of Hockey fans. And thank you, Joe. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Derek, another great one. And uh, we'll be covering next week, uh, covering what's going on in the Stanley Cup. All right. See you next week. See you next week.